Hello and welcome, I'm Rachel and it is a privilege to welcome you today to our online service and thank you for choosing to connect with us and be a part of our online church family. We're going to spend a few moments being encouraged uh, through singing uh, songs together in worship, uh, looking at God's word and uh, we trust that you'll be blessed and encouraged by the time that you spend with us. I just, before we start, want to take a reading from Psalm 33, verse 18, and it says this, But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, even as we put our hope in you. Today, as we worship, as we gather online, let's just rest in the knowledge of knowing that he loves us with an everlasting love and that he wants a relationship with us and wants to minister to us and speak into our lives today. Let's worship with this first song. Oh 
It's great to sing about God's unfailing love and amazing grace that he showed to us on the cross of Calvary. Easter is what we celebrated last week, but for us as Christians, it's not just something that is once a year, but that's why we worship. That's why we gather, because we rec recognise and remember the price Jesus paid for us and what that means for us as a Christian and the hope that we have in him. As we continue with our worship, I just wanted to uh, read a, a little um, few, few lines from a book called Why Worship. It says, when we worship, we can be filled with joy, no matter what our circumstances are. We can find a reason to hope, even when all around us seems bleak. We can be perplexed without being in despair and rejoice even in sorrow. Dutch author Corrie Den Boom knew what it was like to face extreme suffering and loss. Having been a prisoner in the barbaric Ravensbrück concentration camp during the Second World War, she writes, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. If you look at God, you'll be at rest. This is why we can come in worship before God with all our fears and worries and doubts and concerns. And we can shift the focus off ourselves and onto him. And we can rest in his presence.
good day everybody and God bless you. Thank you for inviting me into your home by the technology that we have and isn't it wonderful to think that even as I can come by technology into your home that the Holy Spirit can come into your house or wherever you are to minister to you today. So we'll get on with uh, thoughts for today um, and just to say that these thoughts around um, the events that happened after the Easter time. Easter has come and gone and for most people it's a distant memory almost now and unless they've got any bits of chocolate egg left around the Easter has come and gone for most people and whether they have thought about the Lord Jesus, what Easter is all about or not, I really do not know and a lot of people haven't. Some people I guess have and um, people have thought about it and a lot of people think about Easter and the events of Easter but a lot of them have trouble and have doubt in actually accepting the part of Easter where Jesus rose again. Um, they can accept the fact that he went to the cross, that he lived, history tells them that, but the fact that he rose again, they have some doubt about. And it's on that subject uh, and one of the events and one of the times when Jesus uh, visited his disciples and followers again that we look at today and it is talking about doubt, doubt that Jesus had rose again, doubt that Jesus could actually do what he said he could. And we have an example of that in uh, John's Gospel and it is taken from chapter 20 reading from verse 24 through to uh, 26 and it is particularly uh, majoring and talking upon uh, this disciple, the disciple that we know as Thomas and over the years because of this event, event has got that title of Doubting Thomas but I want to look at that this morning, this today rather and to ask the question, you know do we have doubts? Not necessarily doubts about uh, the fact that Jesus rose again but that G Jesus can do what he said he would do and will do what he said he could do. But let's read this uh, account now, shall we? Starting from verse 24 then. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again and Thomas with, were inside again and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. And we, as we look again at that there, we just read the next couple of verses, which is an evidence, if you like, and why this was written and recorded, an evidence that even to today and ourselves might dispel that doubt that we might have of Jesus rising again. It reads the next two verses and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God 
and that believing you may have life in his name. Now, this account that we have here, we find that previously, before this time, Jesus had appeared to certain of the disciples and Thomas was not with them at this time, but he had not been there and when he was told about this, he made this statement, unless I put my finger into the nail prints in his hand and my hand into his side where the spear of the Roman centurion had entered, I will not believe. And then we read on that Jesus came again and said the words that on the occasions that he did come to his disciples said the same thing, peace be to you. And then invited Thomas to just do what he had asked to do. Then Thomas, believing very much, said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus uttered these wonderful words um, where he said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. Also to go with this uh, reading that we have this morning, I have a text from Mark 9 verse 23 which says if you can believe all things are possible to those who believe now it would be very easy to sort of look at Thomas and as, as I say uh, look at him as the one that doubted but when you look further into this you find he was not the only one that, that doubted if we, one of the other occasions that Jesus came to his disciples it says that they were fearful and unbelieving and had doubt about this being Jesus they thought that uh, he was a spirit and he'd actually had to say to them to touch me, feel me that I'm not a spirit or a ghost that I am flesh and blood and, uh, and then furthermore to give proof and evidence to them that he was who he said he was he asked for food and they gave to him a piece of fish and a piece of honeycomb which he ate to show that he was not a spirit, that he was who he said he was, he was the Lord Jesus. So as well as Thomas there was this doubt with the other disciples which we find that in, in uh, Matthew's Gospel. Um, so it brings us to this point that I, I raised earlier on when saying about doubt doubt that we can have not in the Lord Jesus not necessarily in the fact that he died and, and rose again but going back to the text which says all things are possible to those who believe and it asks that question if you can believe and so I feel very much led to speak on that today on this fact of us having doubt. We too can have doubt. Maybe in your life or what is happening with you at the moment, there might be an event where you, you doubt that the Lord can do this for you or will do what you're asking or maybe what you are praying for. Maybe it's something from your past where perhaps you doubt that you can be forgiven for something in uh, your life, something that you have done. There might be all sorts of reasons. It might be a loved one that you want to come to Christ and you doubt that that can hap ever happen. Maybe it is an illness, something that uh, you are undergoing and you have a doubt about that. In one part of you, you want to believe and you do believe, but a doubt is in your mind. And obviously, it is the work of the enemy, of Satan, to put that doubt in your mind, to make that doubt grow. And I've very much come to that point about entertaining the doubt that can come into our mind. For when we entertain that doubt, when we allow, think about it, when we allow it to take over our mind, because that's what it does, it grows, and we can allow that to grow. So we really should look to what the Lord said about doubting. One of the 
instances uh, that we have is that one of Peter when he walked on the water that time when the Lord invited him to walk on the water and for a while he did but when he looked away from the Lord and looked at the wind and the waves how he sunk uh, and the Lord had to lift him up which we find in Matthew's Gospel um, chapter 14 verse 31 and the Lord said to him O you of little faith why did you doubt? And the other occasion that I mentioned earlier on about the other disciples uh, that doubted at that time and were fearful and thought that they had, found, had seen a spirit which we find in Luke's uh, Gospel, and t uh, chapter 24 and verse 38. And the Lord asked them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? And so when we ask, we need to let faith grow. Dispel the doubt and let faith grow within us. We don't necessarily need to wait till we see all the answers or how we think God is going to do that which we need from him in our life but to trust in him, have faith in him and believe that he is and he can do what he says he can do. In James 1 and 6, it's talking about asking and in this case it's talking about asking for wisdom, something that we all need plenty of, particularly in this day and age. Asking for wisdom and it gives this advice, James 1 and 6, let those ask in faith with no doubting for those who doubt is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind doubt when doubt is in your mind uh, and doubt in your heart so it is that you go one way and the other in your thinking and it gives that example like a wave that is tossed about and driven by the wind the wind of doubt. And so <clears throat> we ask ourselves that question today. Is there something, something in our hearts and in our mind, an event that we have asked the Lord to uh, put right for us or something that we need or require from the Lord, a, a want that we have and, and we seem to think it's not going to happen or can the Lord really do this? for me and while all that goes on it brings a turmoil in and upon our lives i bring that you back then to what jesus said each time on each of these occasions he appeared after his death and resurrection when he appeared to his disciples and his first wor words were peace be to you or peace be with you we have a scripture uh, for that in Ephesians 2 and 14 which reads for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation what we're talking about here you think how marvelous was this work of a Calvary this what brought about a peace between us and God it broke down that wall of separation which was sin sin was defeated Satan was defeated sin was overcome and it broke down that that wall of petition it broke down that wall between us and God reunited us with God through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ his death and his resurrection which we are reading when we st about when we stop and think about that how marvelous how great there was no greater work there was no greater thing than this than that we should be reunited with god so when we think on those things and then think about what we might have asked for, what we are needing, what we might have a doubt about us, about it, it causes us then 
to uh, our faith to rise within us when we think about that, when we think about the wonder and the marvel of our salvation and what brought it about. Surely then, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for him. And as it says there again in the text, if you can believe, all things are possible to him or her who uh, believe. And then we come to that part where we need to exercise our faith, when we need to dispel the doubt, to push it to one side and to say that we, yes Lord, we do believe. Um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Brings us back to our reading in verse 29 where the Lord said, Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. You know, that is us. We have not seen. We do not have the evidence of sight like those and seen the Lord like the disciples have. Yet we have believed. What we do have is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. He, that one, that is with us, that enlightens us, that shows us and that can speak to us today. The Lord, by the Holy Spirit, can cause our faith to rise when we look to him, his salvation, and all that he is and all that he has done. It causes us to have faith. It causes the doubt to be dispelled and that we can have that faith and trust in the Lord, what he has said and what he can do and will do for each and every one of us. Our final scripture I'd just like to uh, bring as a reading uh, just of a few verses there for us. It is in 1 Peter 1 and verses 7 and 8 and picking up in the middle rather of verse 7 it says praise and honour and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Again there, saying that it is by faith, it is by faith that our salvation comes. It is by faith we believe in him and believe in what the word of God says. It is by faith. And we then allow that the doubt to be dispelled in our life, our faith and our trust to grow by reading of his word, by talking, by drawing close to him and trusting in him and what he has said. Not necessarily seeing all the answers, but not seeing by the Holy Spirit's revelation, then Christ revealed to us by the Holy Spirit that we can believe in him to do that which we have need of in our lives i've come to the end of what i want to say today just trusting this has been a, a help to each and every one of us and when we think about that because as we've said doubt can rise in our minds and that is the work of the enemy don't let Satan win. The Lord already has won the battle. The Lord has overcome by the work of Calvary and that wonderful resurrection, the completed work of Calvary. I just have the words for you of an old song that we used to sing many years ago, and it's that song called Only Believe. And the first verse uh, goes, Only Believe only believe all things are possible only believe those lines are repeated then it goes on to the second verse which says lord i believe lord i believe that all things are possible 
Lord, I believe. Again, that's repeated. But just that second verse, almost like a prayer, almost like a statement, and a statement that we can bring this day against the doubt that might be in our mind for whatever reason or whatever it is that we have doubt that the Lord maybe can't do or doesn't want to do. There's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. But we might think, well, he can't be bothered. There are more people with more important things than the my little problems or needs. The Lord knows and the Lord cares. So that second verse of that song again, as a prayer, we can say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things, even my things, my problems, my cares, my worries, all these are possible for Lord, I believe. Trusting then that that has been a help to, to you and a blessing to you, just pray that the Holy Spirit enlightens you further on that fact that all things are possible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that all things are possible because you are God. Lord, you created all that is. You know all that is. And as your word states to us that there is nothing that is impossible for you. When we think of the work of Calvary, when we think of what you achieved there for mankind, we realise how great and wonderful that was. And in that, Lord, we're encouraged to come to you again with our pleas and our petitions and to believe, Lord, that you bring the answers because you love us. And Lord, although we have not seen, we have the evidence of the Holy Spirit to encourage us. And Lord, we say, as you loved us, so we love you. We thank you then, Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything and all that you are to us. Lord, we're asking these things in and through the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We thank Ken for that word of encouragement and challenge to our lives uh, today. Thomas, when the Lord said afterwards, blessed are those that believed who have not seen. And we are of that generation, praise God, by faith, who believe though not seen, but praise God, receive the wonderful revelation of what Christ has done for us. So bless God for that. Praise God. We're just going to close in prayer. Well, let's uh, also remember uh, the sad news that all of us are familiar with of the passing of the Duke uh, of Edinburgh. And uh, the crypt just tells us to honour those that uh, have the rule over us. And to pray for for leadership and so on, even within our nation. And so let's just do exactly that. The Lord, uh, the Queen uh, often refers to the Lord uh, in her speeches at Christmas time. And she is always one that's sent to honour the Lord. And we thank God for that. So let's just pray for them as a family, like any bereaved family. Uh, thank God we can pray for one another. And even regarding those that are in leaders of our nation, even the very Queen and her family. Father, we thank you for the word of God, uh, Lord, that we've heard today expounded. We thank you, Lord, that we are those who do believe, although we've not physically seen you, we know of the wonderful revelation that we have received because by the power of the Holy Spirit, you, uh, Lord, brought that revelation enlightenment to us. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for every member of our assembly and those that are looking in, even on uh, this uh, online uh, service today. We just pray that you'll bless each and every one, Lord, that you'll have your way in each and every one of their lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, for the Queen and her family in this time of bereavement. We thank you, Lord. She is one that does honour you. But Lord, we just pray for the family that they will look to you as well. Uh, Lord, just have your way. Your scripture said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And when we look to you, we can know your comfort. And so, Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name 
that uh, Lord you'll just have your way even in their lives we pray at this time of bereavement and now Lord as we proceed into this next week Lord just cause us to be a blessing wherever we go whatever our life is a part of that you might have the preeminence in all things and that we'll be a blessing to other people we ask these things in Jesus name Amen Amen well God bless you it's been wonderful to be asked to share uh, this online service with you today be a blessing to someone this week wherever your life takes you and let the, as I often say let the joy of the Lord constantly be your strength and I often say this because it is so very important the joy of course of, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit and let's allow it to manifest itself in all of our lives to others God bless you have a great week